Platformers are one of my favorite genres. Their lighthearted, fun, colorful nature brings me a ton of joy and many recent games have done a great job of showing why I love this genre. From A Hat in Time to Shovel Knight, to Rayman Legends and Crash Bandicoot, and so, so many more. As a longtime fan of the Crash series, I've been quite impressed by the new sequel that has came out this year. There is a lot to enjoy about this game, from its control that feels a lot better than the recent remaster, to being able to not use the, in my opinion, outdated and annoying and completely shit life system. Also, if you're a furry, there's Tanya, so yeah, covers a lot of bases. But how about someone who likes platformers, and boss fights, and platformer boss fights? How does Crash 4 do in this regard? Well, let's discuss in another edition of Boss Rush, a series on the design of boss fights. Before I continue, I will be spoiling every single boss fight in this game, so if you want to avoid all spoilers, please don't watch until you've played the game yourself. With that courtesy call out of the way, let's get into the basics of how Crash and Coco control. In terms of options for attack, you have a spin and a slide, also you can bounce off their heads. For platforming, you have a jump, a double jump, and a slide or crouch into a double jump. Landing on top of a box or certain other objects will bounce you up in the air and you can control the height of it. Those are the basics for yourself. For the bosses, how they are designed is primarily on pattern recognition, and I mean this in two ways. One is some fights have a specific pattern that they follow. Attacks always come in the same sequence, and the challenge is learning this pattern and executing on it. You can see this in the first section of the fight with Embryo. He will always send these bottles at the same locations in the same order every time you fight him. The challenge is then to recognize this and properly avoid his attacks. Same with Entropy. These pillars will remain in the same location and these orbs come out in the same order each time. The other type of pattern recognition is for specific attacks. This is the common method used for bosses across all games where animations or some sort of telegraphing will indicate that a specific attack is coming. Each attack will have some sort of tell from the way these damage discs glow before they shoot out or how these missiles will have a glowing circle on the ground to indicate where they'll land. Proper telegraphing is vital because it is the main indicator for what type of attack is coming. The next big thing to learn is when can you attack. Most of the time the boss is invincible until the game allows you some way to attack them, usually in the form of an enemy that will just fucking fling to them. This is typical of how many platformers handle boss fights, where after avoiding some attacks, the boss will be made vulnerable for a short duration. So the enjoyment of these fights largely depends on how interesting these defensive phases are. Which brings me to Crash. Everything that I've described of Crash 4 also applies to the previous games. Like just look at Ripper Roo from Crash 2. That sounded funny. He follows the same path every single time you fight him and you just have to stand there and wait for him to be made vulnerable. Also just look at this. Look at how boring this shit is. This is a goddamn disgrace. Now look at Engine from Crash 4. He sends out the same attacks, always in the same order, and once you destroy these speakers, afterwards, he is made open for attack. So after like 20 years, the only way the bosses have evolved is to have more steps you need to accomplish before attacking them. Even then, that's not always the fucking case. Let's compare the Entropy fights from Crash 3 and 4. They are both easy platforming sections that follow a straight pattern, but somehow the new fight is even shorter. But I guess better since you don't have to do it for as long. But that doesn't change the fact that the biggest thing they seem to have added is mid-fight checkpoints. I guess. The very core of these boss fights are why I don't like them. They are part test of skill but become test of knowledge. Once you defeat these bosses, they become trivial on repeat runs and are pretty trivial on the first run if I'm being honest. And I understand why some of you might be saying, why would you ever want to replay a boss in this type of game? Or boss fights aren't even what these games are truly about. And I would say, why not? Why shouldn't platformer bosses in games like Crash be enjoyable content that you can enjoy multiple times, or even one time? Why should we accept that some of these fights are fucking basic as shit? Once you figure out the pattern, it's just a simple matter of execution. And you can say the same about the levels, but for those you can learn ways to complete them faster, 
You can find small tricks the more familiar you are with the level that will save you a few seconds off your time. There aren't ways to make the boss fights go faster by using a high amount of skill. You have to wait for them to be made vulnerable, so it's hard to even consider them fights. It's more like Simon says. And the attacks you have to dodge are things you've seen before in other games. Look at this example. They might look different, but it's the same principle as Enrio's attack. A point of impact that creates a wave to jump over. Example 2. Yeah, it might not look exactly the same, but they share a lot of the same DNA. A direct attack you have to jump over. How unique! So the bosses stick too close to a pattern and don't really offer up anything unique. It's things you've seen in other platformers if you are familiar with the genre. So how could they improve? One way is to use aspects of the platforming in the boss fights themselves. I don't mean just have waves or damage lasers or something to jump over, because every fucking game in existence has one of those. Or both of those. Or all of those. I mean use things specific to Crash's moveset and mechanics in the boss fights. Which is so odd, because the game has the perfect avenue for this in the form of the mask. And I'll have to detour real fast to explain how these masks work for those who might be watching but haven't played the game. There are four masks that Crash and Coco could use that the game gives to you at set points. These masks are... Ah oh shit, this is gonna be rough. Uh, Lonnie Lolly, a mask that allows you to switch dimensions. Akano, he allows you to spin at great speeds and slows down your descent. He also deflects green beams of energy. Kupunawa slows down time. And last but not least, Ika Ika, which shifts your gravity. These masks are the main new mechanic in Crash, and four of the fights use them. Funnily enough, in two of these instances, I found I didn't need them at all. Lani is used in the engine fight to help you reach his robot and hit him. The thing is, he's unnecessary. He is useless during this fight. You can actually defeat engine without using him at all. What the fuck? Akano is used in Embryo's second phase and is used to push him off. But due to the nature of this mask, the best way to use him is to jump in the air and to avoid all of Embryo's grand slams. At least Akano is useful in this fight, so that's something. In Encortex's first encounter, you get Kupina Wa. I don't know how to say that name. But I found that using her made the fight a bit too trivial. I had more fun not using the mask because the challenge of avoiding all these layered attacks was quite enjoyable. It's one of the few fights I can make mistakes on still, and sometimes a lot of mistakes. But doing it the right way just ends up being as mindless as the others. Finally, Ika is necessary for entropy. You just have to change gravity to attack these pillars. It's such a basic use of this match that seems to be on the level of a tutorial, not a boss that is at the end of a rather challenging area. In the final boss, these masks are used against you. They might cause the floor to disappear, or flip your gravity, or slow down time to help you. Aww, he does really care about you. But again, it's still weird that the final test for these masks is someone using them against you. They made you learn and master all of these masks, but don't allow you the opportunity to really demonstrate that you can use them against a challenging foe as one last test. It's weird. I think these masks have a lot of potential for you to create fun and interesting bosses. Take Lonnie. You can have a boss that focuses on the idea of changing dimensions to avoid attacks, similar to a game like Ikaruga or Outland. Maybe you can craft a similar encounter but use gravity instead of dimensions, so Ika has more uses. Akano reflects green projectiles so have them be used to reflect a lot of projectiles or something. Make a boss that occasionally uses rapid fire attacks and use Kupina as a means of avoiding them, but do it a lot better than the version that's in the game right now. These are just ideas off the top of my head, but I throw them out there to show how these masks can be used in boss fights. Boss fights in all forms are supposed to be a test of our knowledge of the game's mechanics, but if most of the time you ignore your newest mechanics, then what are you testing us on? If you want to test us on the basic mechanics, then why not do more with jumping on boxes? Only one boss uses this at all, and that is the final one. 
These platforms shoot out lasers, so bouncing on them will keep you safe, which gives you plenty of time to think about your next move. The last phase gives you the possibility of using all of these platforms to avoid touching the ground. Or you could just ground pound them if you want to go faster. This is an example of using a platform mechanic that you'll see during the levels and repurposing it for a boss. Games like The Messenger and Shovel Knight do this perfectly, so it's a shame that Crash doesn't really attempt something similar outside of this moment. I know a large portion of this is now focused on what the bosses aren't more than what they are, because what they are isn't much. The defensive phases aren't really that interesting, even on the first go around, mostly because I found them too easy. Which is odd because overall I think Crash 4 is one of the harder games in the series. Platformers have gotten really good at creating interesting and unique levels with their mechanics, but many still struggle in crafting a boss fight. Or at least a good one. Honestly, I do recommend Crash 4 overall, it's just this aspect of the game that is a bit of a letdown. I'm overall really happy with the quality of the sequel, and I still do play through a lot of the levels from time to time, slowly but surely trying to 100% the game. The level design and overall control and feel of the game deserves a lot of praise. The boss fights do not. I don't know how often people discuss platformer boss fights, so hopefully at the very least I provide something new to think about. Thank you to everyone who has gotten this far. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe. It does help out a lot. Goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Damn she thick.